qualifying action. Kevin Delaney and Duffy Wilson, we're going for the call here. Our team's looking for those points to move to the final. Getting through the qualifying rounds, been nothing but trouble for a lot of riders. Difficult course and challenging man-to-man -man contact here. Great riders in this heat. Jeff England, Adam Merriman, Dave Dow, to name a few. And out of the start, all six riders, head to head, the whole shot being the most important. And Billy Anthony grabs it through the first turn. And a great placement of our helmet cam as we watch that Never Summer rider Anthony take the early lead. Two series of berm turns here. The first jump, a nice cruiser, and over this difficult fall away right-hander, one of the most treacherous spots of the course. Anthony keeps the lead. Dowd is behind him. McAllister's back there too. Anthony continues to ride out. He's down, drops in, makes Good air and a nice little turn there, Kev. Here's where the course splits, Duffy, to over under jump. We got McAllister takes the under out. Dowd and Anthony go over. Here comes Dowd passing Anthony and McAllister appearing on the left-hand side, high on the berm. Dowd's underneath in front. McAllister carrying a little bit more speed. Photo finish over the tabletop jump. We're in qualifying. This action right here, we get a glimpse into the future of a sport that has no problem with innovation or evolution. Hi everybody, I'm Duffy Wilson and welcome to the new Dodge Supercross Snowboard Challenge from the Copper Mountain Resort high in the Rockies of Colorado. You know, snowboarders are hard to pin down. They've always craved attention, but they certainly haven't cared about acceptance. Well, now they have both. Huge numbers entering the sport and Olympic status. In 1998, they'll be in the Olympics in Nagano, Japan. Border cross, it's like roller ball on a snowboard. Six competitors going head to head down a roller coaster of a course. This will be, here at Copper Mountain, the first world championships for Team Border Cross. Border Cross has been around for a long time, but nothing like this. And not many starts in snow sports like this, just like motorcycle racing. Competitors line up across the start, grab the handles. Three, two, one. And launch. On the course right here, the whole shot being the most important aspect of this race. And we see some team tactics playing here with number nine and number 41, JJ Collier and Jason McAllister playing together in the lead. McAllister then takes the lead, leading the field through the series of bank turns over the first jump, into the fall away jump. Very difficult part there, you see McAllister sketch. Axelson moves into the lead. JJ Collier in third. Axelson with a commanding distance out in front of McAllister. Over the angled jump there into the whoop de doo section. Right here the course splits into two different sections. Kevin will have a real good look at this. There goes Axelson over and McAllister under. Who do you think is gonna come out in the lead? Time and time again, we've seen the man going over, carries more speed into the last berm. And here we have McAllister up on top, passing Axon at the finish, and a commanding lead through the narrow tabletop. Flying and qualifying, the board riders get six points thanks to McAllister, and Axelson gets four points for Stim. Six points for a win and zero points for your team if you come in last place. Kevin, what about the course? Here's the aerial view of this exciting course. The red section, banks and berms. The green section, the continuous run through. The blue section, the big tabletop jump. And the red, the final berm and the finish area. The new Dodge Supercross Snowboard Challenge is sponsored by the new Dodge. It's about change. By Paul Mitchell, professional salon products and by Copper Mountain, where the skiers ski and the borders ride. Welcome back to Copper Mountain, Colorado and the new Dodge Supercross Team Snowboard Challenge. Hey, where's my partner, Kevin Delaney? Well, Duffy, I'm here at the top, and there's nothing but tension up here and the discussion, team tactics. But the course is a big element here in the race today, and it's nothing but fast, big jumps, high-speed corners, and large, large air. We have an over-under jump, big banks, and at the bottom, the biggest tabletop Copper Mountain has ever built. In fact, follow me, let's go check it out. Okay, first job is to get the whole shot. Got to get the whole shot before I come to this first bank turn. I want the inside line, the racer's line. Two of those coming up. My next object is this high speed jump coming up in front of me. I want to stay tucked in the air, compact and smooth. This is the dangerous part. I got to slow down, maintain my edge, and this long straightaway section where I can catch my breath and set up for the rest of the course. 
kind of a difficult fall away jump here to the right land a good ok and i got to make a choice i'm going to go under or over i'm going over it's more fun and i get a chance to show off a little bit yeah nice a few more bank turns a few rollers it's a critical part right here this last big bank turn oh i should have gone up high it's way faster hang on for dear life approaching the big tabletop and God! Danger and fear on every corner, nothing but treachery on this course. But I did that by myself. Imagine five other people with me. Ten no need to imagine, Kevin. Open your eyes. Here they come. Interesting Raise field of riders here with one standout. Three, Adam Hostetter, two, one of the only riders one. in hard boots here. The gates drop, the whole shot fight. And look at that, an immediate pileup. Leaving three riders here to jockey for this win. The gates drop, and so do three riders. Hostetter, Ratcliffe, and Merriman still on board. Hostetter in front, Merriman in second, Ratcliffe in third, over the first long jump into this difficult right-handed fadeaway. Hostetter handles it with the superior edge control of the hard boots and the race board. And you can see those nice turns equate the speed, and Hostetter is moving out. Hostetter with a big lead right now, coming off that big turn on the left side of the hill. And here comes the time for decision. Is it over or under? Hostetter picks over. Merriman in second, coming under. Radcliffe. Radcliffe right there, he went over too. Hostetter with the lead. Let's see how things shake out. Hostetter over that last berm, and Merriman has already blown by him for a commanding lead into the final massive tabletop and crowd pleaser. Crowd pleaser launch time. Adam Merriman for the board riders gets six points in that race. Adam Hostetter was second for Sims with four points. There's Lucas Ratcliffe with three points. Robinson Kelly and Kintig knocked down, but they get points. Take a look at that fall. What happened, Kev? Here in the replay, you see some tactics taking shape here. Kelly moves to his left and takes the feet out of the other two riders, but to no advantage to him as he fell himself. Qualifying continues. Dave Dowd will be on the left and way over on the right, Jeff Davis. They generally have a shot at that whole shot. And out of the gate, a tight field, some jockeying going on. First guys out of the picture, Jeff Davis grabs the whole shot in the first turn, followed by Mayerhoff and Dowd. Definition, Stephen Babbler got knocked down and jumping out into the lead is Jeff Davis for Salty Peaks. A very tight lead group and a big air for Dave Dowd. DQs around the gate. Big hard slam leaving Davis and Mayerhoff to battle this one out. Two riders making turns, picking up their speed right now. Mayerhoff and Davis. Davis is in the black. Mayerhoff has those white pants. Davis takes the inside line, Kevin. Now they're coming to the moment of decision. Is it over or is it under? Looks like Mayerhoff is drafting off of Davis as they both choose to take the under line, the continuous line, proving to be the faster line here on the Supercross Challenge. Davis way out in front, a technically smart rider, and just he has this one wrapped up. Davis to the finish line first. Well, they're past the finish line. There's no style points, but there's just points for your team. Everybody's flying past the finish. How about one more? Ooh, nice try to 540. Let's look at the results of that run as they come up on the board. Davis gets six points. Meyerhofer with four down at the bottom. Dowd, he got zero, and here's why. He left that jump on the wrong trajectory and landed on the wrong side of the gate disqualifying himself. Wrong part of his body too, landed on his head when he finished up. Back to the top of the course we go. Race Paul Henderson race. on the left, Three, Spinuski on the two, right. I call that out one. because those outside guys don't get knocked down that often. Lots of physical contact, two riders already down. This is border cross. Yeah, and I said the outside riders don't get taken out. And sure enough, going down on the outside was Dave Spinuski. He's out of the race. And our leaders are taking shape with Travis Young, Henderson, and Cassell, one, two, and three. Moving into the, ooh, bad trouble for Travis Young. He obviously hit the brakes there. Now we see Henderson way out in front, followed by Cassell. They're coming into this right-handed aerial turn, and now it's decision time. Through the whoop de doos it looks like Henderson and Cassell are both going over the top. Henderson and Cassell go over the top, and so does Travis Young of the Sims team. And now they are one, two, three. Henderson, Cassell, and Young. 
I think Henderson's got this one wrapped up, but Travis Young is barreling into the finish, closing the gap. The photo finish, they're touching boards. Travis Young lands fakey. Let's see who takes second or third for that one. Paul Henderson first place. He gets six points for his team. Travis Young got four. It is a team event. We advance six teams to our semifinals, and that action is coming at you next from Copper Mountain. Kevin Delaney and Duffy Wilson, welcome back to Copper Mountain, Colorado, the new Dodge Supercross Snowboard Challenge. Kevin, qualifying's done. Half the teams have packed it up. They are on their way home. Jet plane is lifting off, but the six teams that did make it, the Board Riders, Sims, Salty Peaks, F2, and Chaos, are packed with talent. They know what wax to use, and they have really figured out this course today. Semi-finals action, we're ready to go. All six teams are represented at the start, Kevin. There's four runs in the semifinals and two runs in the final. Got a mixed field here in this heat. We have some Europeans, we've got some talented veterans, and we have some newcomers here to round out this exciting course and really move into the finals. And all of these competitors, these riders, Three, are looking for points for two, their team. One. The gate drop, the battle is on. It looks like the entire left side of the field has wiped out. Jason McAllister's down, moving out in the lead is Hans Axelson. He's going, going, gone. Followed by Billy Anthony and Jeff Davis from Salty Peaks. The first long, aired out jump moves into that right hand and fade away. Lots of trouble and Billy Anthony experiences the same sketch, leaving Axelson way out in front. Axelson with the lead. He's followed closely by Jeff Davis of Salty Peaks. Davis does a front roll over the handlebars, leaving Axelson all alone. Axelson taking the under route, the fastest line today. Now followed by Mayerhoff in second and McAllister in third. Kevin, it looks again like the battle's going to be for second and third place, and those team points count. There we saw the second and third riders bunched up on the berm. Axon clears the finish with style and in. Second looks like McAllister over Mayerhoff. Nice 360 there by Anthony. It's a great race and a beautiful finish for Hans Axelson. 12 points and zero points for our veteran Jeff Davis here in second place in the black going over the handlebars on one of the many treacherous jumps. Seems like this course is designed to knock the riders out. I've been designing a lot of parks this year and I really want to take, uh, I really took a lot of the park elements and put it into the course um, with a lot of bank turns, um, really sweeping turns that will bring you to the next berm really high. Um, a lot of narrow and tight technical aspects as well that really were the eliminators as you could say. Um, but big jumps and uh, a lot of fun. Ready for the second heat of our semi-finals. Set the field, Kevin. Lots of talented riders. Once again, we see Adam Hostetler in there with the hard boots. Mixed bag of talent, young and the old, the veterans and the rookies all pitted together in this incredible fight to the finish. Lined up side by side. And out of the gate, the heat begins. We see some jockeying for position. Looks like the hard booter, Adam Hostetler, gets the whole shot this time, followed closely by Chris Jorgensen, number 22. And number six, Jordan riding for F2 Snowboards. Hostetter way out in the lead, getting bumpy. Around that difficult followaway turn, we see Hostetter head down. Rarely do we see the leader go down, causing complete chaos in the back of the field. From last place moves into second, Adam Merriman with Jordan way out in front through the whoop de doos What a development in this race. <laughs> Javier Jordan with the slow start. Maybe this is the uh, famous race of the tortoise and the hare. This time the tortoise wins out. Jordan with the lead right now for F2 as we come into the lower section of the course. This race looks like it's basically over. Well spread spaces between the riders. Jordan flashes us a big Indy over the final table. Merriman in second. And an incredible finish. Chris Jorgensen there in third place, but the winner of that run and 12 points for his team F2, Javier Jordan. Now our current standing, the board riders have 56 points, Sims with 48 points, way down at the bottom, Chaos, 28 points. Six teams advanced into our semifinals, and two more semi-heats coming at you. 
Welcome back to Copper Mountain, Colorado and the unique new Dodge Supercross Team Snowboard Challenge. It is one of the very best things we've ever done. Uh, the crowd is into it, the spectators, uh, the contestants, the employees. It is, it is something that's new and very, uh, very exciting for us. It's been tremendous. And exciting for the fans in the finish. They look up to the start. They are anticipating heat number three in the semi. A very well-seated field here with nothing but experience. Every rider here has been riding for more than eight years. Very talented competitors. A mix of hard boots and soft boots. This semi should be one of the most exciting today. I like the way you say mix because that's what we see in Supercross. Great group of riders, but who knows what's going to happen? Who gets the whole shot, Kev? They're fighting and pushing already. Some nice acceleration. It looks like Blue Montgomery's out in front for the whole shot. A very close second and third. Hands on each other. Oh, maybe even a shove there leading to a big crash. Nate Galpin coming in from behind. Takes second. Just see him coming over the jump now. Blue Montgomery with a huge lead. And in third, Jay Isaacs. The space between the riders here, it's going to be tough to catch anybody. Look at how far in front that leader is, Blue Montgomery. Montgomery in the lead, 12 points for a first place finish, eight points for second, six points for third. Those are team points over the over under. The over for Blue Montgomery, Galpin and Isaac take the under. Galpin, a hard boot racer, carrying a lot of speed here. Tap the brake there for just a second. Looks like he's happy to settle for second place today. Blue Montgomery with a nice 360. Nate Galpin finishing. An exciting race. You never know who's going to win these border crosses. Six teams in the semifinals. Montgomery gets 12 points for his team, Salty Peaks. And Montgomery out in front here at the point of the controversial crash. Lucas Demlo definitely laid some hands on Mark Fawcett, enough to shove him out of second place. And now we come to our fourth and final qualifying heat. Only three teams will advance. The board riders are way out in the lead, and there are three teams right behind them that are only separated by five points. And those teams are Salty Peaks, F2, and Sims. The real battle here is who is going to make it into the third spot and who's gonna get knocked out. Never Summer and Chaos are out of it, but Paul Henderson of Never Summer jumps out with a whole shot, he's in the lead, and a crash up high, it could hurt those teams. We see Spinooski there recovering, but out in front is what really counts. We see Holman just now undercutting Travis Young of Sims. The real battle here between F2 and Sims, Salty Peaks nowhere in contention right now, but we see F2 with the commanding second place, Travis Young battling for third there. This race is not over yet, though, as they enter that right-handed aerial turn, moving into the whoop de doos and sit, and a crash for Holman. No problems there. He just caught an edge and fell down, opening the door for Travis Young, who is now in third. We see Tonini Kopene coming around in third for Salty Peaks. Definitely a contender in this fight for third place. First and second looks wrapped up, and the riders are so well spaced out. Third place looks obvious as well with Tonino Capene. Well, that fall by Pat Holman certainly is going to hurt his team. Let's take a look at our finals results. Henderson gets 12 points, Young 8 points, Capene gets 6. Holman needed points. Look at this bunch right here behind Henderson right out of the start, and down they go, Kevin. A lot of pushing and shoving, grabbing of clothing. Needs a little bit more referees on that run. Three teams knocked out, F2, Never Summer, and Chaos, and three teams advance. You stay tuned because it's just going to get more intense. Finals are coming at you from Copper Mountain. It's going to be exciting. The finals bracket is set, and Kevin, you have to admit, we've seen some great riding, but you ain't seen nothing yet. Well, these top three teams have been working real hard, but here it's going to be more aggressive, more attitude, team tactics. You can smell the money. These guys are going to go ballistic. Two runs in the finals. The board riders led all day long. Salty Peaks and Sims came out of that battle in the semifinal. Putting their best foot forward here. Lots of talented riders. They've already been through the course a number of times today. They've all taken their crashes, and they've all placed well. Kevin, I've got a question for you. They've all been bumped, shoved, kicked, bruised. Are there any sort of hard feelings right now, uh, things to settle? 
It's going to be settled right here, Duffy. And our start pushing off with the green helmet. Moving into the lead, Jay Isaac of the Board Riders. Followed by Mark Foster and Blue Montgomery in that red shirt. Mark Foster with the superior edge carving skills. Definitely a fast and violent contender. There goes Jay Isaac putting on the brakes. Causing a little bit of spray there. Blue Montgomery ends up taking a 180. He's facing forward again, just to be passed by Travis Young. Up in the lead, Mark Fawcett moves ahead of Jay Isaacs. Mark Fawcett showing some difficulties there through the whoop de doos Jay Isaacs takes the under route while Mark Fawcett goes over. We are going to see a photo finish here, I'm sure. Mark Fawcett moving around that last corner there. Great hard boot edge power, and he is all alone. The race again for second and third between Kopenny and Isaac. Fawcett celebrating. It's Jay Isaac taking the photo finish for second, Kopenny in third, and Travis Young for fourth. Well, Kevin, they were neck and neck right here, but Fawcett was carrying the speed, and he took it to the finish for the win. Wasn't pretty, but Fawcett did hang on to that turn to dominate that round. Our whole team, we kind of trained a little bit this morning together and got to work well with each other, and uh, that's definitely going to be a factor in these last runs. Fawcett was a factor in that run in the finals. Now Sims has a shot at it. Salty Peaks is in third place. The board riders have led all the way through. Kevin, board riders can win it if they want, and Sims has a chance. It's going to be a very, very heated event here. We have some talented riders from Sims. Number 17, Hans Axelson, you see here. And number 18, Adam Hostetler, also from Sims, riding the hard boots. They are the people to watch here to try and capture the first place title. Can the board riders wrap it up? Can Sims come out of second place and take the championship? And Duffy, the whole shot battle is intense. McAllister in the red pants, but Axelson takes the inside and faster line to sneak by in the first place. It's Axelson, McAllister, Davis, Hostetter. Axelson continues with the lead, followed not so closely by McAllister. Axelson stays out there. Things have strung out very quickly. It looks like these riders have figured out this course, Kevin. Nice turns, and everybody is staying on their board. Here's the decision time after these whoop de doos Someone must go after the jump. No, everyone is taking the faster line underneath. We have seen no crashes, and the order of this race has remained the same. Here we see some tactics coming into play. McAllister takes the high line, which is the faster line towards the finish. And there we see the finish. It is McAllister for the board riders. They dominated all day, and McAllister continues that domination. But how about Sims, Axelson, and Hofstetler, second and third place. McAllister the win. The anchor man of the board riders, congratulated by teammates and fans. Board riders, number one, all day long. Great team effort in there. How did it feel crossing that finish line in first? Oh, great. It was a close call. Those guys are really close. The Sims team was tough. It was a lot of fun. All right, you guys are on top. Got to thank the board riders club from Vail. What do you think? What do you think of the team format style here? Oh, it's so fun. It's a great event. First one I've ever done. Rules. McAllister learned his lesson. He went high and wide and fast. And in the last 10 feet of the race, Axelson is stopped. Hostetler goes upside down. Number one, the board rider Sims was close at 103 points. Salty Peaks way back, but a great day. The new Dodge Supercross Snowboard Challenge has been brought to you by Factory Design Lab. By Airwalk, bringing style to sneakers. And by Copper Mountain. It's where the skiers ski and the borders ride.